We're gonna be rich. Hmm. This is the kind of Marvel movie I'd like to see because it's absolutely fresh. There's nothing like it. Groot is one of the strangest characters Marvel has ever attempted to put on film. I've had a lot of folks try to kill me over the years. I ain't about to be brought down by a tree and a talking raccoon. Oh! What's a raccoon? What's a raccoon? It's what you are, stupid. Rocket and Groot are both such important characters and essential parts of the ensemble. Oh. Yeah. One of the challenges was to have two of the five main characters be completely CG. So we have Rocket Raccoon. Ain't no thing like me except me. And Groot. And hopefully, after you see the film, you never feel like they were not there when we shot it. Let's make something clear. This one here is our booty. Chris Pratt, I think, is 6'2". And then you have Groot, who's about 7'5". Seven, seven, it's like a huge difference in scale. Over here, over here! The animal's in control! We had people on set for both Rocket and Groot. We had a fellow by the name of Christian who played uh, Groot, a Polish mime, a great guy. And then my brother, Sean, who played Rocket. And, and honestly, Sean was as important a member of the team as anybody else in this movie. And he created the character of Rocket. A lot of times he had this green bodysuit with just his face, you know, sticking out of it. And he would crawl around like a crab so that he's the height of Rocket. Uh, we had a little person on set also, Artie Shaw, who's a wonderful woman. But Sean would be shorter than her <laughs> when he was crawling around. So he's able to get to the actual height of Rocket, whereas Artie had this Rocket t-shirt, basically, with Rocket's face where her chest is. That's the first thing you said. That wasn't bad shit crazy. Because Rocket is only four feet tall, it was incredibly important to have something that was a good cue for camera, good cue for performance, good cue for eye lines, and that when we put our CG Rocket, that it was seamless. I live for the simple things, like how much this is gonna hurt. Bradley came in and added to that character and created another aspect of that character. And anything he was doing, it was videotaped as well, and it was used consistently for reference, whether it's the facial gestures, sometimes the, the hands. You just want to laugh at me like everyone else. Rocket, you're drunk, all right? No one's laughing at you. The way it works is we kind of get in the groove, and you sort of feel out what Rocket is like, and then it just starts to happen, and you kind of zone into this Rocket world. And then the visual effects artists come in, and they take what Bradley did and what Sean did and then create something additional to that. And so really, the character of Rocket is created by many, many people. And that's one of the things, I think, that makes him seem so real to us is because he does have this life of his own. Um, and we're all sort of serving that. I have a plan. You've got a plan. Yes. <laughs> It's a fake laugh. <laughs> it's real! James loves raccoons. I mean, for the London premiere, he showed up with a raccoon on his shoulder, a real one. There's a, a raccoon by the name of Oreo who became my pal in London, and I'd hang out with him all the time. The cast would meet Oreo, the visual effects artists would all study Oreo, and Oreo was the basis for a lot of what Rocket is. I recognize this animal. We'd roast him over a flame pit as children. Her flesh is quite delicious. Not helping! Our animators use everything that we can give him a more. Very, very fluid, you know, so he... James Gunn also was really, really handy, and, like, he will just act it out for them. We'll put it on video or in CineSyncs, and we will show it to the animators directly. All of those little bits do help in how we end up with, hopefully, a picture that you don't ever question. Was it done or was it not done in CG? If I weren't so comfy right now, I'd get up and punch him in his smug, dumb head. It's not just the sound we're taking. We're taking your upper lip. We're taking what your cheek is doing. We're taking what your eyelid is doing. You take great amounts of time in looking at every detail of every performance. That's when you hope you capture the soul of the character. Oh, what the hell? I don't got that long a lifespan anyway. I spent a lot of time dealing with the animalness of Rocket's eyes and a lot of times just dealing with the innocence of Groot's eyes. The most important thing for James was that Rocket and Groot had as much of a soul as he had envisioned for those characters. He loves Rocket and adores Groot. He was incredibly dedicated to make sure that everything from what was happening with the lower lip of the mouth and what's happening with the eyelids and how does it droop? Is the hair too much, too little, to this, to that? The tail, should it be moving? I mean, all of it, every detail. He was like, Rocket and Groot have to be perfect. Put him in a bag! No! 
Not her, him! People often call Groot a tree, and they call him a tree in the movie. And he has certain tree-like qualities. But one of the things for us was that Groot's a plant. And so there's other elements in his body, the way his veins and his musculature works, that's more like a green, soft plant than it is like a tree. So a lot of what makes Groot look like Groot is actually trying to create a plant that could move like a human being. The function is more important than the design element in that respect. So it came from the function of the character. <sighs> Same thing with Rocket. What if they broke his sternum and stretched it out? Because, you know, a raccoon doesn't really have a chest. So if we were going to turn a raccoon into a walking, talking raccoon with a gun, you have to break him apart and add metal structure in here, which is what we did to him. So a lot of the look of Rocket and the look of, of Groot is function, and then form follows that. <laughs> and once we got the function right, then we started to refine the look of Groot and, and give him that ability to be both very innocent and very fearsome. And Vin came in, and he says five words in the movie. I am Groot! And his voice filled up that character, and that character suddenly seemed complete. I am Groot! I'm really so grateful that so many great creative minds came together to work on a character. All I had to do was breathe the life into him, because just his presence promises some kind of wisdom that if we stick around, we'll get. What we've been able to do is we've been able to have the utmost quality that time will allow you to have. Time always wins, by the way. We never win. If it was up to us, we'll still be working on uh, at least 100 shots. But you gotta give it up. The world has to have it.